Dreams are a part of our everyday lives. They are sequences of images, ideas, and emotions that occur in the mind during sleep. But dreams can be so much more than that. They could also be goals in our lives that we aspire to achieve, like pursuing our passion, or traveling the world, or finally buying a house. Like former First Lady Michelle Obama put it, the only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and the willingness to work hard for them. So join us as we jump down the rabbit hole and enter the world of dreams. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to What Dreams Are Made Of. My name is Nick Calvace, and I'll be your host and guide as we dive deep into the dreams of the people of Milwaukee. Today, I am joined by Megan Schultz, who created the Cream City Dreams podcast with Shelley Roeder, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today. Cream City Dreams is a podcast that shines light on Milwaukee women, one dream at a time. Megan, I would like to thank you for being here. Thank you very much. It's fun to be here. Fun to be on the other side of the, uh, the questioning. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about Cream City Dreams. Yeah, so this is a podcast that Shelly and I uh, came up with, oh gosh, about two and a half years ago now. Uh, we're coming up on two years of being on air, but um, yeah, it's, a, it's something that we just, it's our passion project. It's something that we love. Each week we interview a different Milwaukee woman who, as you said, is living her dreams and we shine a light on her. Um, we talk to them about what they do, of course, um, but in fact, what they do isn't as important to us um, as kind of how they got there, how they came up with this idea, who supported them along the way, why they wanted to do that, um, and how they did that so that we can show our audience uh, and our listeners that it's possible to dream and that dreams are, you know, Anyone can have a dream, right? Absolutely. And, and what you need to do, what we've been learning from all our guests, um, and we have we have um, quite a few lessons that are, are similar across all of the guests, and that is that they just take one step at a time, they do the next thing that they need to do along the the path toward their dream, and and they and then they get there, and then they arrive. Um, but it, and it's not, you know, you, I think sometimes we see things in the paper about dreams that happen overnight or right. overnight successes, <laughs> right? But actually dreams are a lot of little steps um, along the way. And so we uh, wanted to highlight that in our podcast. It's something that um, we also are trying to illustrate just through the podcast itself. You know, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know <laughs> how to do a podcast. We had to Google like, how do you get something on Spotify? How do you get it on Apple? What, what, how do you make a website? You know, all the things we had to learn for ourselves as well. So we kind of want to show our listeners that they can do it too. It's actually not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's really inspiring. Yeah. You mentioned that, um, you know, that you've been doing it for, t for two years, I mm -hmm. believe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are, what are some additional ideas that you guys have in store? Um, well, gosh, we've had, um, we started, we started with, um, season one with people that we knew, um, that, you know, we saw as living their dreams, friends and, and, um, women that, you know, we had some connection to. And then in season two, we got a little braver and reached out to people we didn't know and said, hey, want to be on our podcast? And, and almost everybody said yes. And then in season three, we went with dream makers. We had sort of had a theme that season and we went with people who were um, offering dreams to other people and um, making dreams possible for other people in the city. And so we're just gonna keep moving with women who are living their dreams in Milwaukee because there are a lot of them. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So I guess going from there, speaking of women of Milwaukee, Fatima Laster is someone who has made her dreams become a reality. And to this day, she continues to do so much more. Here is her story. My name is Fatima Laster. I am a self-taught visual artist turned gallery operator from the city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
In 2018, Fatima Lassie made her dream come true when she converted a Central City funeral home into Five Points Art Gallery and Studios. So in 2018, I was, I didn't have the hat of a gallery operator, but I was a working visual artist and I was in, in need of a live home workspace. And prior to that, I would be doing my own pop-up shows in like friends' residencies and my own um, going back and forth in Chicago. And so I said, what um, I need and what I could envision was my own like live home workspace where I could create like my own Harlem Renaissance and uh, create this really beautiful platform for all of us to congregate develop together, excel together, support each other, create this um, live home workspace that I share with people and um, you know, that we could take on the art and world together. And that's what became Five Points Art Gallery and Studio. Fatima then had another dream, to help minority artists in Milwaukee. And they're still living out that dream to this day. Well, the initial beginning was, I guess I always say it was selfish. I needed a live home workspace. But as soon as I um, immediately walked into the space and got access when it was vacant, I said, this is going to be this shared space for us to be us, to be free, to make what we want, and so we can help each other grow. And so the dream was a vision, was a thought, was a hope, and was the um, intent, and it is being rolled out in practice as we speak. Besides her dreams to help the community, she also has dreams and visions guide her to her art. Dreams and thoughts are the same. Um, one probably is uh, alluded to more while you're sleeping. I do have visions in my farm sleep and I try to wake myself up out of the sleep and take notes or try to remember it. Um, I have epiphanies and aha on how to approach an art piece or even how to resolve an issue with the building or what have you. Like, oh, that's the, that's the answer. So yes, a lot of um, um, extra details come with um, dreaming for me. Fatima talks about a mural she was commissioned to do for the Martin Luther King Library called We Have a Dream of Peace. So in, I believe it was 2015, um, I was commissioned by the Milwaukee Public Library to do a mural in a called We Have a Dream of Peace. It's a very loose and abstract background. It was a community mural that I structured, but it had King and plaster pointing from like his I Have a Dream speech and leading these doves, these symbols of peace, holding olive branches and leading to the children. Cause you know, those are our hopes, our futures, our truest dreamers. And so that was the message. We have a dream instead of I have a dream of peace, making it communal and global, we have a dream of peace and, you know, embracing that. And so um, that was what that mural stand for. And I, I was able to rescue it before the building, um, the library was raised um, for this new development. Fatima Lasser is nothing short of amazing for what she's been able to accomplish. She continues to live out her dreams and leaves a message to those that have dreams of their What I would tell people who are have dreams of their own or are dreamers is don't shy away from your dream. Dreams can be deferred, but don't let them get too deferred. Don't let people chase you away or, or negate them or tell, them, tell you it's stupid or impossible. Um, because some people abandon their dreams to um, conform and um, that's not what they're there for. They're there to push you and show you possibility dream of a world that is different from now and you can create that and it can be that path and that blueprint to tell you how how to do it wow truly inspiring Fatima's words truly describe what it means to be a dreamer what do you think absolutely you know what I'm struck by in her story is similar to what we hear from a lot of our guests in the idea of community and dreams as, as a community builder and something that brings the community together right and also wanting to share that and pass it on and pay it forward you know she wanted to bring in other community artists and local artists around town create a space for them it very much reminds me of the guest we had on last week a couple weeks ago um, symphony swan who's opening a cr the creative house which it sounds like a very similar space she's taking the childhood house that she grew up 
in and creating right. an artist student uh, studio and residency. Um, so I'm, I maybe they, they probably know each other. It's, that's another thing we're finding: small walkie, right? Everybody knows everybody. In fact, our guest this week um, just said, "You're two phone calls away from yes in Milwaukee." You know, we we want to help each other. We want that's what we're finding: w women, everyone in Milwaukee, but the women that we've interviewed in particular want to see other other people succeed in the city. Right, right. That's all. That's really inspiring. That's the word I've been saying all night <laughs> from what I noticed. So, um, what other uh, what other similar stories um, have you? found that are similar to Fatima's? You know, I mentioned Symphony. We've also had another muralist, Tia Richardson, on in our uh, season one. But we've had so many uh, different kinds of dreamers on our show. We've had chefs and restaurateurs. We've had artists and poets and um, uh, activists and nonprofit leaders and executives. I mentioned our season three was about dream makers. So we had women who, um, Whose kind of mission it is to to show younger women the way and how to succeed and how to do that, whether that's financially or, um, you know, marketing and social media, you know, all the all the ways that with it, young entrepreneurs need help. Right. There are places in Milwaukee to do that, and, and organizations that want to set uh, people and and women up for success. Right, right. That's that's all powerful stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's great. Have you ever followed up with some of these uh, some of these stories with your podcast? Yeah, that is actually where we're aiming to do that. In fact, one of our big goals, what we'd love to do is we keep saying, imagine if we had all the women that have been on our show in one room. Wow. If we could get them <laughs> together, um, what a powerhouse group of women we, we could have and what what kind of solutions we could come up with for some of the things in, in the city that need um, that need working on. So um, that is one of our goals to bring those women together. And it has been fun to follow up with these women and also to connect these women because sometimes yeah. we're surprised at the guests that we think, oh, obviously you must know each other because your work is similar or your work could help each other. And they don't know each other. So we're able to make that connection for them and um, and then to see them working together, that, that, is, that brings us so much joy. That really is a passion of ours. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, in terms of those connections, has there been one that really, you know, I guess they're all, all of them are inspirational and powerful. Was there one that really stood out to you that, I guess, made you and Shelly feel like, yes, we, we, we accomplished, you know, our dream? Gosh, um, let me think. You know, we had um, Ashley Valentine who was opening up uh, Rooted MKE. When we first started, we actually interviewed her before the, the shop opened. It's a, a bookstore on Bleet Street. Um, and the, we had a muralist, Tia Richardson, who I mentioned, who was just coming out with a children's book, and they didn't know each other, and it was the perfect spot for them to, to meet and to, to, right. you know, to sell her book and to host events for her. So yeah, that connection was fun. Um, oh, I feel like there's been so many, so many others I'd have to, hmm. For maybe for another show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, I'll come back on that one. <laughs> So I guess with all that being said, uh, Fatima last year said that children are our truest dreamers. And so our student producer, Ivan Aguila, decided to meet the children of Milwaukee, hoping to learn about their dreams through art. He soon realized, though, that that wouldn't necessarily be the case. I made it my mission to learn more about the dreams of the children of Milwaukee. And found no better way than to art. I first met with Mateo Garcia to learn more about his dream. My name's Mateo, my favorite color is orange. What I do for fun is play, play with my friends for a little bit. And I also like to eat. <laughs> I asked Mateo what he dreamt of becoming when he got older. And this brave kid did not hesitate to answer. Becoming a firefighter because you can put out fires and save people. Um, they help other people when they have fires. Yeah. He also told me about another dream where he hopes to one day go. Going to Disneyland. They have different roller coasters. I like to eat popsicles there. Okay. Okay. I'm done. No. 
I like orange. I just put orange in my And that's it. After he was done, he revealed his masterpiece. A blue sky, green trees, and a red Mickey Mouse. Afterwards, I met with Naila Ward to learn about her dreams. My name is Naila, and I like candy, and I have three brothers. Her dreams are to be in the spotlight and shine like a Hollywood star. An actor. Because sometimes I can bust out tears for no reason. She also told me about her most recent dream, that was actually a nightmare, about a scary baby. The last dream was scary, because at my house we was watching a, 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 like a movie, and the movie had like this baby that was a monster that came out of a, a girl's belly. When Ayla was done, she showed us the scary baby from her nightmare and finally put a face to the monster. It's a baby monster. This was truly a learning experience. It taught me the difficulties of working with children, but also the imagination that inspires them. Wow, those kids are truly creative. And that baby monster, ugh, that, was, that scared me. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, that was adorable. Um, yeah, it, that's one way to put it. <laughs> but it was, uh, but it was creative. So I guess on the on that subject, um, as parents, how do you encourage children to pursue their dreams? Gosh, you know, I'm a mom of three. Shelley's a mom of four, um, and I think just and again to take a lesson from the podcast is just keep saying yes, just keep trying new things. You know, it, it, I, I think the you saw that in the the video. The kids aren't afraid to. To, to fail. They aren't afraid to color outside the lines. They aren't afraid to try new things. And I think as adults, we sometimes get hammered into boxes and- You can say that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, just, just keep saying yes. And that is something that we've seen from our guests over and over too. They just keep showing up, even if they don't know what they're doing, even if it takes, they've got to do some uh, research or you know, a YouTube tutorial on how to do what they want to do. They just keep doing what the next, the next right thing, so. Right, right, 100%. So, you know, as we grow older, there's that flame and eventually it begins to flicker in terms of creativity and imagination. So um, how would you continue to, you know, just tell children to continue to pursue their passions and live their dreams and, um, you know, continue to encourage them, for lack of a better word? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it is easy to sometimes fall into the trap of listening to those voices. And I think um, what has helped me personally on this on this podcasting journey is having a partner to do it with having um, Shelly who's not here unfortunately taking home taking care of her kids um, who are sick um, but um, having a having having somebody to share a dream with um, regardless of whether you share the spotlight with a person or it's it's you know your it's your dream but somebody who's supporting you along the way, finding those people who believe in you, who will tell you that you can do it, who will offer constructive criticism when it's needed and feedback, yes. you know? Um, you don't just want to surround yourself with yes men or yes women, um, but I think um, having a supportive community is, is one way to keep going on that, on that dream and, and to have somebody to whisper it to, to say, do you think I can do this? And they can say, yes, you can, you know? So I think, yeah. I think that that helps. Absolutely, even better when both uh, you know both parties are really encouraging each other. Absolutely. So yeah. I guess um, so that's how that's how Shelley must be then with your podcast. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. We play off each other well. We know each other um, well. It's one of these days. I keep saying I'm going to make a. a uh, real of our outtakes, <laughs> 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 which are um, mostly mostly PG, sometimes PG thirteen, but well, <laughs> they're funny. They're fun. They can be funny, and uh, yeah, we it's it's we um, you know we we go into a podcast with a rough idea of what we want to talk about with our guest, but we like to let the or, uh, the 
conversation flow organically and and it does and when you know somebody well and you have that rapport with them it it um it makes things easier so right right absolutely it really sounds like you guys are you know not only pursuing but living your dream you know i really can't wait to see what you guys continue to do with your podcast in the next well couple years or yeah 10 years well or? we keep saying we'll stop when we run out of inspiring milwaukee women and I that's never gonna happen honestly don't you and i both know that <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah yeah so you know i guess with that being said what are some other additional ideas or other plans or other maybe endeavors or dreams that you and shelly have together oh gosh um well we would love to get all of the, uh, all of these guests in a room together um we would love to see if we could brainstorm solutions for, you know, things things in Milwaukee that that could be better, so that everybody, so that there's more opportunity to dream for everybody. Um, so we would love to see that happen. I would love to make more connections. I we, you know, we we have seven kids between us, so we do take um, <laughs> so we take summers off. Um, of the podcast, but um, we constantly have a list of guests that we would love to interview and women who we want to reach out to. So, uh, yeah, if we can keep going, we um, would love to have some help with social media. That's not our either of our forte or our passions. Our passion is the actual meeting and talking right. with women, um, not the making reels on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. We're, you know, that is not us. We're two Gen Xers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so one day we would love to have help with that. We would love to find some sponsorship for our podcast. That's what we're going to aim for this this season coming up. So it'll happen. All of that will, you know, happen with time. Thank you. We, that's what we hope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so to conclude, dreams have been a part of our lives since a young age. Dreams can change. Dreams can die. There's always room for another. To all the dreamers out there, don't let anything stop you from making it a reality. But before we close the show, I once again want to thank Megan for joining us tonight. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Absolutely. Thank you for coming again. Yeah. <laughs> I've been your host, Nick Calvace, and remember to keep on dreaming.